Hello friends, this is Michael Canadas with another Gay Gardens Report. Well, uh, as we promised you in the very beginning, we are going to keep this project real. I know that there's some of, that, some of you out there think, well, Michael and David are, are a little bit fancy and they can't really uh, get down with a, a big mess and deal with it. And yes, we can't. Um, so you're going to see this in realness. I'm going to promise you that it's going to get worse before it gets better. And you know, if you're optimistic and you have a hole in your ceiling, do you know it can be very, very handy uh, for a lot of different uh, usage. So you're going to get to see what's happening. Um, we do not need any judgment uh, because I, I recognized in myself that uh, having traveled all over the world and shopped, because let me tell you, I am here to say proudly, I am a collector. And if one day you heard that I am no longer collecting, that's when I'm going to go away like an elephant and be gone. And when you're a collector, you see things like boxes and um, bubble wrap and tissue paper uh, out on the street and you have that, I want it, I want it, I want it. And particularly Mrs. Ward who owned the property, she was living in a very isolated area. And you know what? You need your boxes and you need your tissue and you need your plastic bags. And let me tell you, she kept them. So uh, you're going to get to see things worse before they get better. And I will tell you that we were planning on full steam ahead with the roof and now that's changed slightly and the next big project is going to be the chimneys and we have to do chimney repair and we want to put them back exactly the way they were so that'll be the next uh, uh, project uh, that uh, if Jason is not afraid of heights he'll go up on the cherry picker so you can see that. Um, I also assigned, uh, uh, assigned Jason a project because someone called us up with um, kind of disturbing news about the property's history and I realized that I was kind of in denial and that as a kind of amateur historian I needed to know. So what we've learned so far is that the land that Gay Gardens is situated on um, has been populated by European and African, people of African and European descent since at least 1763. And the plot was laid out in the 17th century. So we are going to explore that. We are going to um, celebrate the, uh, the, the good parts of that and the negative parts. So I hope you enjoy this segment of um, gay gardens and remember it's going to it will get better so we will talk to you later bye bye so it's a little late at night i understand this but i wanted to bring you all in and show you some progress that we have made inside the house now the contractors have not totally begun work yet but they have done a few things um me and my husband and our friend did get the attic completely cleaned out now by completely cleaned out it's not perfect there is still a little bit of trash up there but the contractor is going to remove all that new uh, plywood sheets are going to go down to make a decking board so things could potentially be stored up there at some point but it's just going to mainly tidy it up and make it a lot neater also when the roof comes off it's going to make it easier for them to be able to put in the new plywood if nothing's up there. So that's been done. Um, we have an auction company coming out to start taking out some of the furnishings, uh, goods and chattel that David and Michael are um, going to move on to a new home. Uh, they have reserved some things for themselves to keep in the house that... Um, seem to be very fitting we also have a lot of trash <laughs> anytime you do one of these uh cleanouts we're 
An individual has lived in the house for many decades, such as Miss Ward did. Um, you just accumulate stuff. You really do. I mean, you just, oh, I'll get to it later. I'll put that box up there. It's fine. That leads to that box, this box. So that's what we're dealing with right now, which is fine. I We have found some pretty cool stuff that has just been forgotten to the ages until now. Um, that being said, there is still a lot of trash. <laughs> I will show you that. So brace yourselves. It's going to look really scary, but it's going to get better. I absolutely promise you that. Um, we also are going to start getting out some of the appliances, some of the soft furnishings, the rugs, all those things that are um, holding on dust and smells to really freshen up the house and just give it a fresh lease on life as we go through uh, forward with this um, renovation process. So brace yourselves. It's going to be a bumpy night. Stay tuned. Okay. So I figured we'd start in the front hallway. Now, not a whole lot's changed out here. We have moved um, the tables and chairs that were sitting right here. Um, staircase pretty much looks the same. Nothing's changed there. In here, um, the sofa set tees have been taken out. Um, those were not salvageable. Um, a lot of this, um, is going to be boxed up. This is all stuff going to auction. And then over here we have, um, nice big trunk that will be going to auction. Some of these mantle pieces will stay. A lot of, some of that will go to auction. Um, these are kind of cool. These are um, presses, probably for sausage or um, cabbage or something like that to press liquid out of them. Those are probably uh, mid-late 1800s. And then we are going to go in the kitchen. Now, the biggest thing out of here is the refrigerator. When old refrigerators stop working or get unplugged, they have this very distinct odor which <laughs> it it gets really bad so i'm very happy that that's gone um as you can see the stove has also been removed it was very old um uh this whole room is going to actually be um completely completely taken down um to those studs and completely renovated at some point in time um in the near future all of these items you see over here i'll just point uh this pie safe, all this is going to auction, this nice flat front. Um, we have some tchotchkes, bric-a-brac here on the table. Um, I will go through this a little bit uh, more thoroughly, but a lot of this will be going. Um, David and Michael have decided to keep the lovely cast iron pieces that are here in this cooking fireplace, which I think is a nice little touch. Again, uh, mantle will be cleared off. This is actually a kind of a nice um, fireplace, original to the house. And then move over here. And again, all this will come down. And then we have this amazing um, farmhouse sink, which I it's one of my favorite things in the house, actually. So that will at some point be redone and still be featured here in the kitchen, which I am very excited about. Okay. Now you will notice through the house, um, the colors again of this woodwork are very nice. And we are going to actually at some point get color matches for these guys. So we can do some touch up, maybe some repaint in some areas. Um, the contractor actually has a really cool tool that he can actually hold up to the paint and it will actually scan it for the colors needed to get it as close to the original as possible, which I think is pretty nifty how we've come a long way. Again, this beautiful staircase is one of my favorite woodwork features of the house. Um, just beautiful. Um, camera really doesn't do it justice, I think. 
It's much prettier in person. Very nice. And now we're going to go into what I believe was a porch at one time, which was then converted into a TV entertainment area. Um, not 100% sure the fate of this room. I don't know what its overall look is going to be. I'm not sure what um, we have decided so far as uh, progression of renovation. I do know... Um, put my hand on it. This wall here is like old barn wood, but there's actually nothing behind it. It's, it's vacant. Um, there's no insulation or anything. So that will probably have to come down and insulate it. And this will probably all be redone at some point in time. Um, this little jelly cabinet here, unsure of what's going to happen to it. Um, David, thinking about it. I, I rather like it too, so not sure if it's going to stay or if we're going to move it along, um, but it is a is a lovely piece and it has beautiful blue um, finish on it, which is original. And as you can see in here, the moldings are quite lovely, just like the rest of the house. A little worse for wear, I think, in here, um, but that being said, see me in the window that's not a not a person or a specter i promise okay and then this is the downstairs bathroom nothing has really been done in here but i'll show it to you again uh so this room again at some point is going to be gutted um and completely redone when you're redoing these old houses like this and you um get to the bathrooms and the kitchens it's best to just go to the to the studs and the floor joist and just start over again because you have no clue um, what condition anything's in you don't know if there's any water leaks any just gunk or whatever um it's just it's just better in the long run let me apologize david and michael i'm really sorry it's a mess i understand we're gonna clean it up so brace yourselves this is the part I said it is going to be a little frightening. And yeah. So <laughs> if anyone wanted to know what 40 plus years of accumulation in an attic looks like, here you go. Um, so the reason it looks like this, one, we decided to use the hole that had fallen here in the ceiling because a lot of the items were on this side right here and above this particular room, in, as a matter of fact, um, which is part of the reason the ceiling started to come down now. So we decided to start throwing the stuff down that, that you know, non-breakable, just garbage and empty boxes and all that junk. Two when we were walking up here and starting to take things off the boards of um, thin plywood that were actually used as flooring started to actually crack under our weight and we were not standing on them at the same time so it was one of those things where we just had to get the job done and unfortunately this is what that looks like when you are kind of in a hurry and you don't get to um organize and just you're just getting it out of the attic because it's, it's it's becoming dangerous and we don't want anyone to get hurt so now that it's on solid ground this weekend i have um a young gentleman coming to help me bag this tag it and throw it right out this window into a dumpster so even more convenient um don't worry, there is stuff under this that is going to auction. There is some good stuff in here, believe it or not. I know it looks terrible. Um, you will see there is a big Victrola horn, which goes to that machine with the uh, pole. That is an, an Edison machine. That is staying. That is um, one of the pieces the guys have decided to keep because it is quite nice. This is a hardtop for a Mercury a Coupe. I didn't even know those were still around, but it's vintage. Now it's from the 80s. 
um, again some more mantle decorations which will go through and most will be auctioned um, again some lovely mantle details the mantles up here are slightly different than the ones downstairs the ones up here are a little plainer the ones downstairs have a little bit more spoon carving on them which is um, kind of typical when you go upstairs in houses the fancy details were always in the public rooms of your house unfortunately back then the fireplaces and the bedrooms and the wood floors were often very plain and you uh, more uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, utilitarian that's what I couldn't think of because you put your money in the rooms people saw back then when this house was built in the 1870s it was indecent for um, friends and um, more acquaintances to go into private rooms of the house only the family would go into these more private rooms of bedrooms and again all this is going to be coming down at some point this is from a leak this is like the paper of the um, plasterboard drywall whatever you want to call it now this room um, as you can remember from the last video had a bunch of dolls sitting on this bed the mattresses are been taken out um, a lot of these dolls um, were have been gone through um, a lot about half or more have been actually taken out those will be listed individually um, some of the a lot of these are actually like project dolls or um, hobby hobby kind of things so those will be um, sent to auction and probably put in box lots um, this is cool. I found this in the attic, in the eaves of the attic, way up in the, where it had very much been for many, many years. So I'm wondering if this at some point had hung in the house. Um, it is period correct for this type of house, later Victorian. So it's very possible this could have hung in this house at one point in time and maybe was just forgotten by um, previous owners so you can see the mattress has gone out of the bed the bed will be going to auction um, this large walking spinning wheel will be going to auction all um, this little chairs and everything will be going now this is some of the Christmas stuff I found in the attic now I hope to do a separate video to show you guys what I found but let me just kind of give you an idea this stuff is very old and very fragile um it's tinseled and it's probably i'd say late 20s at best um so it's very old it's very very fragile so i am trying to handle it as little as possible um until we can really sit down and sort through it better um with better um better things um, than these old boxes and what's interesting is you can see here right there you can kind of make it out it's like a perfect square rectangle that's what i refer to as a witness mark or a shadow now at one time this was probably a window to the outside now this room here was added at some point in time you can see the panels on the door are much different than the panels on the doors in the house these panel doors are more typical of probably the teens 20s whereas if we pan this way you can see this is a four panel door which is very um period correct for this time period in this house so I'm going to um, make a hypothesis that this is definitely a later addition and that originally there was probably a window here. And I'll show you on the other side what I'm talking about. Now this room, again, not a whole lot has happened. Let me get my phone out so you can see what I'm talking about because, again, this room has no light in it because, well the light electricity just doesn't work in this part of the house okay so let me show you here what I'm talking about so you can kind of see here 
that this wall is very different from the rest of the house. It's almost, again, like that covered textured material that we found in the bathrooms. So, more than likely, these rooms were added um, later in the house's history, much, much later, I would say. Even these two windows here, which are the same style as um, the windows in the rest of the house, could have been originally on this wall, one here and then maybe one about where the door is now. Maybe when the contractor's in here pulling off these walls to repair them, replace them, we might be able to find um, some evidence of that. That'd be kind of interesting. Um, this window and I believe the windows in the service porch are the traditional six over six window, which are definitely added later in the house's history. The moldings are different too. Whereas these, which are very unusual, four over single pane, are original to the house. And you can see here that, I'm trying to do this in a way that doesn't glare too much. If you look at the molding here, this is actually the same as the rest of the house. That's why I'm thinking these windows were originally on the wall behind me now and then were moved out to this part when this little room was created at some point in the house's history. Um, and oftentimes these rooms were created too, one for more um, bedroom space, but two um, sleeping porches were, were very common in this part of the country due to the hot climate and um, lack of AC. <laughs> so, you can see this, there's an antique for you right there, that monitor and everything is pretty old. And that um, love seat or fainting couch will go. And then as you can see, we are dealing with this unfortunate um, <laughs> issue, which all this is gonna come down. This will all be replaced. Now, what's interesting, I was told by the contractor that this galvanized roof is probably only from the 50s. Um, it is not original to the house, as I kind of thought maybe it was. Um, this is definitely, he said it was definitely replaced uh, many years ago. So, but it is still very old and in desperate need of um, replacing. So... What they're going to do is they're actually going to um, take these boards off and they're actually going to sheet right to the studs um, or the rafters, I'm sorry. Um, so they have a nice flat area to put the roof on. And then at some point when all this gets redone, insulation can be added and that will save um, on the electric bill and the heating and cooling bill drastically. And then we are back in the main room. All right. Well, that was fun, everybody. And let me just show you real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. You'll see here, these um, casings and stuff are like the ones in the other room. So I do believe that those windows were probably on this. Um, let me turn around real quick. I believe those two windows were probably there and there at one time. And like I said, when that room was added, they were moved to the back, which would make sense. Well, guys, that's it for the update on Gay Gardens. I want to wish everyone a good night, good evening, um, or good morning, depending on when you're watching this and where you are in the world. Um, I hope you are enjoying the content. I will be filming more as time goes on. A lot of activity is going to be starting here soon. Um, the porch is going to be remodeled very shortly. The roof is coming off. So there is a ton of stuff about to happen. Even though we are moving into the winter months, there is still going to be some activity. So I hope you stay tuned and I hope you enjoy um, all the updates. <laughs>
Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.